Hello everyone, Ken here back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, portfolios, LinkedIn profiles, YouTube channels, Instagram channels, haircuts, anything you can think of to hopefully help you land a data science job. In this video, special thanks to Alexander Kahanek. He submitted his portfolio website, which also has links to his GitHub and his LinkedIn. So I'm gonna review all of those things. Hopefully this will help you understand one, what a good project looks like. He has a couple very, very solid projects that I think he's presented incredibly well, uh, but also how to leverage LinkedIn as effectively as possible and really make yourself stand out. I'm getting really backed up with the project reviews, the resume reviews, etc. I think I have like 70 in my inbox. Uh, so I'm thinking of a couple different ways to handle that. So there's, there's a few options. The first is bringing on collaborators. So one of my friends, Tina, I'll, I'll link her YouTube channel below and above, as well as Danny Ma. I think it'd be fun for either two of us or the three of us to get on a group session and, and do resume reviews live. Um, or I could also pass off some of these to them. They're both very qualified. Uh, but let me know in the comment section how you'd like me to actually handle that. I want to make sure that I get to all of these in a timely fashion. Uh, but I, again, I do have quite a backlog and I'm only doing one a week. So I would really appreciate that from you guys. So with that being said, let's jump in to the review here. We're going to start with the broader website. So Alexander has a really beautiful website that he's built. He has an about him section, projects, resume, etc. And I think that this about me section is something I really like, especially for a portfolio website. This is the best place to talk about yourself, to talk about your background. And Alexander is coming from a, basically a whole nother career where he was an EMT, where he, was, he spent seven years in the military as a healthcare specialist. And I think that that's awesome. You know, Alexander, thank you for your service there. Um, I also think that this, this shows, and, and he should keep in mind that there is no you know, age limit or anything like that related to data science. I'm a firm believer that if you do good work, and also if you combine your, the data science career with whatever experience that you previously had, that makes you very desirable as a candidate. So if he were to go into healthcare analytics or into a space that, where he can leverage his previous existing knowledge, that's a very powerful place to be. I also, again, this is a great place to talk about your interests, a little bit about who you are. I think he has a super cute dog. Maybe one day I'll, I'll <laughs> you know, I'll get to meet Link. Uh, and Link rides a skateboard. So I, I think that that's also just a fun personal touch, which I really, really like. Um, one thing I always touch on is that he is he should make sure he realizes that he is transitioning into data science rather than making a jump. Again, I, I touched on this before, but he wants to leverage as much of that previous knowledge from healthcare, from military, whatever that might be, a, into the data science field. So I would love to see from him and his projects things that show that intersection. One thing that I think generally could be improved a little bit, it, it, this is a very simple uh, website structure where he has projects and resumes. I really like to see where these things are just one page and you keep scrolling down and you get all of the different things. To me, that's basically two extra clicks that you save the recruiter. Again, this is I think this is totally fine, but that is maybe a, a Ken personal preference that I like to see just to make it easier. If you can't make it one page without keeping the aesthetics, probably don't do it. I don't think Alexander has to change anything with the layout. This is very simple. Next, let's look at his, his resume here. So I would probably prefer it if he had just a, a picture of his actual resume in here. That to me would be a bit more intuitive. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't mind the digital resume. This is something, you know, it's, it's 2020. Uh, this is something we can expect to see. Um, I would advise against using, you know, basically stars or visuals to show your proficiency in different programming skills. I would like to just see the language there. Most people, it's a binary, like, are they comfortable in this language, are they not? 
And what I found from interviewing quite a few people is that people are an awful <laughs> are awful at appraising their own skills. You know, I go in, I've never said I was more than like a, if I was to rank my Python skill out of 10, I'd probably say I'm at a six because I know how much there is to learn out there. I am not a Python program, I'm not some of these things. Some of the people that I've interviewed, I know I have better Python skill than they do and they're ranking themselves 9.5 out of 10. So that even though you're trying to quantify things with a, num a numeric scale or some bars, it's still extremely subjective. And I think employers know this and they would rather just see like, do you, are you familiar with it? Do you have it? Do you do not have it? Um, that, okay, I'll get off my high horse, but I would recommend just, just putting what skills you have related to that. Also, when we're looking at uh, machine learning, for example, we have NLP, trees, and clustering. Um, you know, generally I expect to see some linear models like linear regression, uh, logistic regression, um, you know, a, a, some sort of normalized regression techniques. I would like to see a lot more of an expanded list. I mean, NLP compared to trees and clustering is sort of very advanced, but also very vague. These are all very vague things. And with our resumes, we wanna be as specific as possible. So you can put an exhaustive list on there. Um, you know, I don't recommend that you guys copy a lot from my personal resume, but I think that that is one area where I do particularly well and it is worth copying the detail that I go into, into the technical skills that I have. So I'll, I'll link my own personal resume review above and below. Uh, as a kind of reference for what that might look like. Again, this is not a traditional resume, so I think this is perfectly fine to have a little bit of a about me, what I'm doing right now statement. If this were the traditional resume he was submitting to people, I would not have this section. Uh, but again, for this format, because this is kind of blue ocean for me, I think this is totally fine. Uh, what I really do like is how he explains his employment it's quantifiable, it says what the outcomes were, Respond, he reduces response time by 50%. These are all really good things that you wanna see. And I recommend in his paper resume, he does almost the exact same thing, but maybe have a couple more bullet points there. When it comes to soft skills, I think soft skills are extremely, extremely important, but I don't think that there are things that you can just tell people. Very much how, like how your skill in Python programming language is difficult to quantify one to 10. It's also, it's hard for me to say that I have good communication skills. You could probably infer that if I have, you know, a hundred YouTube videos where I'm talking to a camera. It's a lot better to show these skills rather than to tell people that you have these skills. And you can show them through a bunch of different ways. You know, if you've written blog posts, that tells me that you're a good communicator or you, you might be at least working towards communication or if you've built a good website that's very clear like, like Alexander has here. So I think that you should show again in the way you talk about your projects, the way that you, um, the, the work experience that you showcase, the volunteer work that you have, these skills, again, rather than explicitly telling them. So uh, a couple things to work on here, but overall still very strong. Next, I'd like to focus on the projects. This is something Alexander has done this as well, if not better than, than most people I've seen. I really like how each project, he shows what programming language it's in. Um, and he also has a very detailed write-up for each one of these, which I think is really awesome. Let's just look at a couple of these. I'm not gonna go too in depth. With Alexander's blessing, I'll link to these. I think that they're very good case studies, a good thing to replicate or try to um, get inspiration from, of course, while referencing him if you do use his stuff. But, so let's go to the top. These are obviously very long. So the purpose of this report, so he's gonna look at booking data. Um, he's gonna understand why bookings get canceled. So one thing that I noticed when I looked through this the first time, I would really like to see the conclusions up top. I'd really like to see what the findings are. Most recruiters, most data science managers even, they're not gonna go through this whole thing. This is a lot of work. You know, it took me probably 15 minutes to look through it the first time. And that's okay. I, I highly recommend going into this much depth, but you also wanna have um, a, a shallow enough layer where someone can understand the whole nature of the project 
just from looking at a top line. And the whole nature is not the abstract. The whole nature is, okay, what were the steps and what were the findings? So if we go through this, he explains the data very clearly. He puts in, I believe he's using our shiny for this. Um, he analyzes the data very effectively. He talks about the features. I really like these graphs. I think these are absolutely awesome. There was one thing that, other thing that I really liked. Um, he includes the math behind the metrics. I think that that's a nice little touch that I haven't seen in many projects. Um, and that is a very powerful thing. We, we always want to understand how we're evaluating our data, what metrics we're using to understand if our model is performing well. And he has a high level understanding of the math that goes into this. I never would have thought to do something like that in one of my projects, but that, that makes a tremendous amount of sense to me, uh, especially if you're trying to showcase that you have the programming and the math skills associated with this. I believe Alexander was a math minor, so you know that might be a really cool way of showcasing uh, the additional value that his math minor brings to the data science equation here. So there's a couple of different models here um, and a, a bunch of really cool graphs. Um, you know, I think this is a cool one. So I believe this is the feature importance for random forest. And most people don't know this. I think this is how the sklearn uh, creates feature importance as well. It's the number of times you split on the variable in the different, uh, in the different trees that you have, uh, through the random forest model. So that's something that, um, you know, just like a quick learning moment, that's, that's pretty cool that it shows it this way. That might just be what's standard in R, but uh, again, I don't use R that much, but I, I do it enough to hopefully understand a lot of the work that's going on. So again, this is a really strong project. It is super in detail, and it's nice that he has this little kind of web portal associated with it. I, again, think that this is one of the most detailed projects or built out in terms of um, uh, like, website and project detail that, that I've seen in a while. This is also cool, the kind of interactive chart. You don't see that as often. I don't personally love 3D charts. I don't think most visualization people are super into them, but I mean, I gotta admit, this is, this is pretty sweet. So uh, again, very well done, Alex. This is something I would absolutely replicate. I would just make sure, I would put this at the top and, and call it a day. Same thing, um, you know, he's looking at, at accidents. He has a, a bunch of these beautiful charts that he's done here. Um, this one might be a little better with a quick overview, but, but really nicely done here as well. He has another one for, um, you know, I guess it's simulating COVID in Italy. Again, he does, uh, he explains a lot of the math. It, it's kind of a teaching moment. and. I think later in the game, uh, I, I very much expect Alex will, uh, Alexander will get a data science job. And uh, if he's looking to become a lead data scientist or maybe a data science manager, I think these projects will actually help him long term because the math, including that, including the storytelling aspect of these projects, they really show to me that he can teach this material and not just. Um, perform the analysis. So again, this is this is really solid. I, I, I'll link these in the description again with Alexander's blessing uh, because they're worth looking through and, and understanding how to very clearly show a data science project. He also has this one which he uses a Jupyter notebook. Um, totally fine. He, he comments it well. He, he does uh, plain text fairly well. I know Python, according to the resume, isn't his number one strength, but this shows to me at least that he's very capable in it. He understands the graphing functions, um, and he can do you know most of the basic stuff there if that was a question at all. Just a quick look at his GitHub. It looks like he hasn't been quite as active recently, but um, not as not quite as impressive as his portfolio. But I don't think that really matters, especially. Uh, since he did put so much time into his portfolio here. So one last thing I want to touch on is his LinkedIn. So he has a pretty, um, 
pretty solid LinkedIn profile here, except when you look at it, it looks like he only has 19 connections. So my recommendation to him, you know, as, as he gets closer to the job search process is to really just branch out on LinkedIn, share your work here, try and make connections. Um, you know, I don't think you should have a LinkedIn connection goal or anything like that, but you want to get as many of these people if you're close to knowing them or if they're in your network as possible, uh, because that's how you create opportunities for yourself. One of the reasons, I, I don't talk about this much, but one of the reasons I created my YouTube content, one of the reasons why I am so um, present on a lot of these social platforms is because I believe that I would rather do things to make opportunities come to me rather than myself go out and pursue opportunities. I find that if I put a lot of stuff out there, if I create a lot of content that's valuable to people, I have to look a lot less for opportunities that I want and the best opportunities where other parties are really interested eventually come to me. And this works the same with the job search, right? If you're creating a lot of content and you've built an ecosystem where people are interested in your work, there's a high chance they reach out to you. Uh, and that really makes the process a lot more fluid. It makes it easier to find these positions. If they're reaching out to you, there's a lot higher chance that you get a job. That might not have been super clear. I, I was kind of going off the cuff there, but I think that that's an important thing to understand. It does take time, but once you've reached that critical mass where you have a body of work, where you have a presence, oh my goodness, it pays tremendous dividends. So I would start thinking about that, especially if you're kind of in the middle of your college career, if you're starting to think about, okay, how do I, you know, maximize my career opportunities going forward, I would start that journey of sharing, creating community as quickly as possible. So I was pretty preachy in this project review. I think Alexander did a awesome job with his portfolio website. I would love to just see him branch out a little bit more. You guys are always welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on a bunch of these different platforms. Um, I, I get a lot of messages. I just went through, I had like 150 messages right before this video. So I don't always get back to everyone in a timely manner. But you know, if I see a project that you guys share, I almost always try to like it. I always, you know, if you tag me, I'll usually comment on it. I'll share it with my network. So. Um, I love seeing people be engaged on these platforms and you're really helping yourself out there. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Alexander, for sending this in. I hope it helps everyone here think about their projects, uh, their portfolios and resumes a little bit differently. As usual, good luck on your data science journey.